Hare Krishna. Why does the Supreme Lord appear in his avatars only in the higher Varanas, namely the Brahmanas and Kshatriyas, and never in the lower Varanas? I'll answer this question in three parts. The breadth of the Lord's appearance, the purpose that he fulfills through his appearance, the, and the reason or the relevance for this question itself. So first is that the Lord appears beyond the human species also. So he appears as uh, Matsya, he appears as wa Varaha, he appears as a fish, he appears as a boar. So to say that he appears only within a section, human society and a section of human society is actually to overlook the breadth of his appearance. And more importantly, the list of avatars, Dash avatars is only one list that has become prominent for various historical reasons. But it is not that the Lord has only Dash, 10 avatars. The Bhagavatam gives a much more expansive list in two different sections. And there also the Bhagavatam says that the Lord's avatars his descents are innumerable. They are like waves in the ocean. He appears again and again. In fact, his appearance is unlimited. Why? Because his love for us is unlimited. His krupa that he wants to bestow is unlimited. That's why we have only a indicative limited list of where all he appears. So to make a categorical statement that he never appears in particular varanas is itself a uh, and uh, overgeneralization that is uh, unwarranted. Having said that, often the rationale for this question is that, oh, is the Lord a discriminatory? Is the, is the Lord pro perpetuating or propagating a, a discriminatory system where higher varanas are privileged and lower are not? So first of all, in some senses, the varanas may be considered hierarchical, but in other sense, they are, they are cooperative. All the varanas, they arise from a nature which a person has and every contribution that people are making, uh, making society according to their particular nature, that's valuable. So, so emphasizing the hierarchical aspect of the varana system excessively often makes the system seem more discriminatory than what it actually was. It's primarily meant for compatible engagement to give every individual the right to work and contribute according to the way they have been endowed and gifted. So for a person with a, with a skill for making money to force them into scholarship, that is discriminatory for them. So anyway, I won't go to the... Uh, Logi the logic of the Varana system. But my point is that even uh, that does the Lord by appearing in particular Varanas eh, as far as our historical record goes, does he perpetuate discrimination and exploitation of the car as given the caste system? Not at all. Let's look at his examples. When he appears as Lord Ram, what does he do? He embraces Guha, who is a fisherman which is according to the hierarchical conception, if somebody wants to insist on it, it's considered a, a, a literally low profession. Similarly, he accepts the berries which have been given by Shabari, who is also considered a, an outcast. Then if you consider Mahaprabhu, what does Mahaprabhu do? When he, he, he is, so I gave an example of somebody coming in the Kshatriya, the Lord coming in the Kshatriya Varana, and when he comes as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Brahman Varana, what does he do? He shares the Harinam and Krishna Prem, the holy name and love for God with everyone. And in the ecstasy of uh, chanting and relishing divine joy, he radiates that current of love to everyone. Sthana, sthana, na dekhi, na dekhi, patra, patra. He would embrace and bless everyone. So if we are saying that the Lord appears in the higher castes, Okay, but what does he do? In no way does he perpetuate the idea that the lower class are lower and therefore they should be looked down upon, exploited. Rather, he sets an example for people in the higher caste of how they should be inclusive, how they should share whatever they have with everyone else. 
So, in fact, his example actually counters the discriminatory caste system and the discrimination that has happened in the caste system. So, that's the second point. Now, the third point is, you know, why might this question come up? Now, sometimes it might just be a, a, curi- a question coming from curiosity when one knows about the familiar avatars of the Lord. And if that is the case, then philosophically, we need to understand that the Lord exists beyond all material categories. He is transcendental. And his appearance in particular varanas does not mean that he belongs to those varanas or he is especially promoting those varanas by his appearing there. No, that doesn't mean that particular, uh, yes, that varana or that uh, dynasty where he appears, it becomes glorious because of his appearance. But he is not coming to prove the glory or proclaim or perpetuate the glory of that particular varana. His appearance is, in one sense, incidental, just like the sun rises from the east. That does not mean the sun belongs to the east. Yes, the east is special. Everybody, when they wake up in the morning, especially when it's dark, and they want to go out, and it's in, they, they want to see when light will come, they look in the east. So there's some speciality about the east, but the sun does not belong to the east. So similarly, the Lord does not belong to any varana. And it is not that because he has appeared in the higher varana, so only higher varana people worship him and lower varana people don't worship him. Not at all. In fact, some of the most elevated saints in the bhakti tradition, whether they be uh, Tukaram Maharaj or others in the Valyako, uh, so many, so many um, Santa Namdev in Maharashtra and so many others like Haridas Thakur in the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition in Bengal, they were from lower caste and they were considered the most exalted saints. So this, why emphasize on this question so much? Now, sometimes some people, especially those with an extreme leftist attitude, they want to re-envision all of history as a power struggle where higher caste people have exploited the lower caste people. But, and such people, if somebody is coming from that ideologically indoctrinated perspective, then it's unfortunate that they will never be convinced. It's better to keep a distance from them respectfully, pray for them and avoid getting into discussion. Now, even if the law, for such people, even if the Lord appeared in what is called one of the lower varanas, then the question will come up, why did he come in this varana only? Why not in that varana? Because he's partisan. So it will not be possible It'll, if somebody is ideologically driven in a particular way, it may be impossible to convince them because people hold ideas, but ideologies hold people. So therefore, the Lord's love is universal and where he appears may have some circumstantial significance, but uh, his appearance, his mission and his mercy extend far beyond the point from his appear- where he's appearing. So I'll summarize, he, is, he appears far beyond the human species and he may have appeared in the lower varanas also. We don't know because we have only an indicative list. Second is that even when he appears in what are called the higher varanas, he actually doesn't perpetuate the discrimination or exploitation of the lower uh, varanas. He sets an example, both as a Brahmana and a Kshatriya, of how the higher varanas to, should act. And as he counters the discrimination in the name of caste system. And lastly, his appearance in a particular place does not mean he belongs there. Wherever, from wherever the sun appears, it illuminates the whole universe. Similarly, the, whichever one of the Lord appears, his mercy is for everyone. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.